Hey friends, if you're looking for quick tips to help you jumpstart your week, you are in the right place. I'm Lori Palau, host of the popular weekly podcast, Organized Life, founder of Simply Be Organized. And every Monday, I am here to bring you a quick organizing tip in under 15 minutes. All you have to do is click the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening, and let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's tip of the week. I am your host, Lori Palau, and I'm so happy that you're here. If you listen to last week's episode, you know that we are kicking off or we're doing a series all about family organization. And last week we talked about command centers, the importance of a command center and kind of what key components you need to have it run functionally for yourself. So if you haven't listened, I definitely think that you should go back and check that out. But today we're talking all about scheduling family meetings. Now, I don't know about you, if this is something that you did when you were growing up. Um, I know in our home, it wasn't usually something that we did unless somebody was in trouble or there was like something big going on. It was like, we're having a family meeting. And that usually meant that there was like, bum, 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 something happening. But I, when my kids were younger, I used to just kind of call family meetings of like, okay, well, this is something, it was like keeping everybody in the know. And from as long as I could remember, we were all sort of running in different directions. Um, Josh more so than the girls and I, but as they got older, everybody was kind of going in their own different directions. Josh was traveling a lot. The girls each had their own unique interests and activities. I was kind of running point on everybody. Plus I had my own business and just all of the things. And so with everybody's moving parts, I would periodically be like, okay, guys, we're going to have a family meeting. And sometimes it would be 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't anything that was usually super long. And we would just either talk about something that was coming up or if there was, I noticed that there was like some, you know, stress in the family or, you know, conflict or unrest, we would like call family meeting to talk about that. But what I really want to encourage people today is to do it more proactively. Use it as some as more more than like let's try to fix something that's broken as let's try to make sure that we're all like calibrated so that things don't break, if that makes sense. So we're kind of reverse engineering it. And with now there's so many ways that families, even with younger kids, can stay connected through shared calendars and, you know, FaceTimes and texts and Zooms and everything. But even though we still have all of this technology, there is something to be said for that one-on-one, -on -one, in person, let's sit down without distraction and all get on the same page. And so what are the benefits and things that I talk about here when it comes to clutter and disorganization is really the breakdown in communication. And so by having a routine family meeting, and it's not something that you have to have every week, you could do it once a month. I mean, you can decide what the flow makes is based on your own situations. You may have seasons where you're doing them, you know, check-ins every day. <laughs> you could have check-ins every week. But then there are other times where you're like, we're all just kind of going our separate ways. And then, hey, we're going to come together. Sometimes people do this over a meal. It could be like, hey, Sunday nights, we're going to have dinner together and we're going to have a family meeting. It doesn't have to be something that is super structured. I just want it to start to become part of the ritual of how your family operates. And like I said, so much frustration and conflict is caused by poor communication and by having this family meeting proactively and sort of kind of having a little bit of an agenda, even if that agenda is like, let's just do a check-in and see what's going on in your week. Um, that could be enough. You just need somebody that's going to facilitate that meeting, somebody that's going to, you know, schedule it, set it up and let everybody know that they are part of it. If your kids are really small, Obviously, they don't need to be in on the family meeting, but you want to do this with your spouse. You want to say, hey, we're going to have a check-in meeting. What's going on? What's going on in your world with work? If you're a stay-at-home parent, you still have things that are going on in your life, right? It, so talk about that. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to avoid things like 
overlaps and overscheduling and missed opportunities like, oh, wait, I can't take so-and-so to the dentist appointment. I've got this meeting or, oh, don't forget, I'm going to be traveling next week. So I don't need dinner on Tuesday and Wednesday. It allows you really to be proactive in moving things around. It allows you to say, okay, I'm going to take this chest piece and move it here, 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 and here. As opposed to going, wait, I didn't know you weren't going to be home tonight. And your spouse going, well, I put it on the calendar and then a fight ensues or somebody gets frustrated or there's this whole big disconnect. So again, saying your kids have this activity coming up. So-and-so's got a concert. This one has a practice. This one's got a uh, uh you know, a game. These are the different things that we want to all have everybody on the same page. And as your kids get older, you can have them set in on the family meetings. They're going to, they don't necessarily need to be in on your like, you know, things that you and your spouse are talking about. But if you are talking about like, who's going to help out with certain things where, you know, who's going to be taking you here, there, everywhere, Having that is really important. It's also a good way for you to check in with your kids and see what's going on with them socially. It's a way for you to check in with them, what's going on with them relationally with their friends, what's going on with them with their extracurricular activities or anything happening. And so I know depending on your kid's age, they may be reluctant to like share information, but just letting them know that they have this safe space to be able to share it is really helpful whether or not they take advantage of it or not um is really not the point it's really about giving them this platform that they know not that they can't share it at any point but knowing hey listen i'm going to be having this you know we're going to be having our meeting i could talk about it here so i think it's really helpful in that perspective um again the redistributing of responsibilities is another thing so maybe you're somebody in your house that you're like, hey, I always make school lunches, but I have a couple late night meetings. And so like the night before, so I am not gonna be able to make or prep lunches. So the kids are gonna have to do them themselves or I'm gonna need you to step in and do it. Or I have an early breakfast meeting, so I'm gonna need your help getting the kids off to school. So having the, these conversations and being proactive about it allows you to kind of redistribute that labor uh, responsibilities. And the last thing it does is it allows you to ask for help. So maybe you're in a season where you've been juggling all the things and now you, for whatever reason, you're just feeling overwhelmed, right? Maybe there's more on your plate. Maybe you've just been, you know, you have more responsibilities at work or just things are, you know, compounding in your life. And you're like, hey, I need a check-in. Like, I know I've been doing this. I know I've been juggling this. I know I've been handling this, but I really need to like delegate this. I really, can you help me out with this? Or maybe we need to call an outside help. Maybe I need a sitter after school, or maybe once a week we need to, you know, schedule some more time one-on-one -on -one for, for us. Having these meetings, again, gives you this opportunity, this designated space to say, here, this is what's on my mind and I want to talk about it as to going, well, we're, we've been like two ships that pass in the night and we don't have a chance to talk about it. And I know from somebody who's been married for 25 plus years and raised a couple kids and both having careers and a husband who traveled a ton, sometimes you just don't feel like you have this time and space to have those conversations. So if it's something that's kind of on the calendar and you know that it's coming up, it gives you time to prepare, gives you time to really think through what is it that I'm looking for? What, what do I want out of this? Do I want more help? Do I want more empathy? Do I want to, um, you know, figure out a new way of doing things? Do we need to, to, you know, rustle up kind of the, the way that we've been handling things? Cause it may have worked at one point, but now we're in a different season of life. And what was what once worked isn't working now. So all of these things make it really important. And again, you're leading by example by demonstrating to your kids that healthy communication is a part of being a family unit. It's part of living an organized life. And it's it's how we move through and get things done consistently. Because life is fluid, 
things change. What worked once doesn't always work. And so having these family meetings is a great way for you to um, really make sure that like everything stays on track. So I hope you found this tip of the week useful. Um, if you have questions, I put this out here last week. I'm going to put it out here again. Things that are going on in your home, in your work, in your business. Maybe you're thinking about starting a business. Anything that's going on in your world. I've opened up spots on my calendar. I get so many DMs from people that are reaching out saying, I wish you could help me. How can I do this? Um, book a strategy call, guys. I put these on here with you in mind as a way for me to be able to weigh in, learn a little bit about where you're struggling and offer some perspective. And so the link is in the show notes, no pressure, but if you are interested in looking for some outside help in that business, big picture strategy, like how do I run my house like a business? How do I start a business? Whatever that looks like, hop on our calendar and I'd love to chat. So um, that's it. We'll be back next week and we're going to be talking, um, c continuing in on our series on family organization. So until then, I'm Lori Plow. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.